Welcome to day two where we're going to be finishing up our icon design animations using Adobe After Effects and Lottie JS. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by our friends over at RapPixel. RapPixel is an admin dashboard and design marketplace that helps designers and developers create clean, intuitive, and user-friendly admin dashboards with ready-to-use templates that minimize development efforts and costs. RapPixel is known for their minimalistic design aesthetic, clean code, and trendy visualizations that bring data to life. They have over 50 ready-to-use free and premium admin templates to choose from and have been trusted and used by industry giants like Oracle, Intel, Samsung, and Dell. RapPixel is currently running a massive Black Friday sale where you can avail up to 95% off their entire range of templates this week. So click on the link in the description to take advantage of this offer. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon here. So in day one, which is just a couple days ago, we started designing these icons right here using Adobe Illustrator and setting up all of our layers and paths correctly. So today we're going to make these animate and we're going to be using Adobe After Effects for that. We're going to export it using uh, the Lottie and the, the body move in plugin as it's called. And then we will step into Visual Studio Code for HTML and CSS and JavaScript in order to make these function. All right. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. All right, so I'm here in Adobe After Effects. We want to create a new composition, 500 pixels by 500 pixels, uh, frame rate 60 FPS. That'll create a really smooth animation. And the duration's one second because I don't plan on going longer than that. Uh, the longer, um, the much larger your file size is going to be, especially at 60 FPS. Um, I think right now our file size for our data.json that gets export, exported is like 6 KB at just one second per icon. So let's hit OK. and. Um, and now we want to import uh, one of the three icons. I'm going to do the clipboard first, but before you import it, we want to choose import composition, composition, retain layer sizes, and hit import. Now that here gives us, it puts everything um, into a composition, so our pre comp. And so now uh, we double click into it. We don't see anything. That, that's because we want to create, um, a, because right now our. Um, borders and all that stuff, our strokes are black. And then by default, the background here is black. So right click down here, new solid, and sorry, everything's loading on my other monitor, background color white. And we're gonna wanna make sure that before we export this, I always forget to hide this element or this layer. Now I'm just gonna lock it so we don't select it by accident, but now we can see what we're working with. And if you're zoomed up a bit, like beyond 100%, it's gonna look like uh, rastered, but that's not gonna be the end result in the browser, don't worry about that. Okay, so what we want to do here is, I uh, we're gonna take all three of those layers, the Adobe Illustrator layers, right click, go to create and choose create shapes from vector layer. Now it's gonna basically replicate them, but it creates them into actual shapes based on the Adobe Illustrator paths. Now we don't need these ones anymore that we just uh, imported. So we're gonna delete those. And now we have these awesome paths that were created as if you created them here straight in Adobe After Effects. Um, so you can, you can modify the stroke weight and all that stuff now. So what we can do now is try to think about, you know, which layers that we have to animate first based on our needs. Um, for us, we don't want the check mark to show up right away. Um, that's going to be the thing that animates in. So really, we have the check right here. We can just kind of push this off some point in the distance. Um, as you can see, when you have just a only a one second duration, we can see frames like five frames, ten frames. You know, obviously we have sixty frames for sixty seconds. So what we want to do is, I uh, by default these icons aren't going to be animating. So when we're in our JavaScript, we can set it to, to not autoplay. Now that'll be false. So this is what's going to be on frame one. So now what we want to do is I want to kind of um, just take this right here, the paper outlines layer, and we want to hide the stroke gradually. We'll make it kind of just erode away in a sense. So to do that, we're going to, to expand this, go to contents. We can add trim paths. And then in trim paths, we have our keyframes of start and end. So if we choose start and go all the way to 100%, it hides it. And that's the way it'll animate. 
So we start at zero. We're going to put a keyframe key there. So you click that icon. And then we're going to come out maybe 25 frames or so and make that 100%. Now, we don't see it. I uh, we, we still see it because this uh, right here was on, it was visible and it's basically the same shape except the check mark. But really this animates now like that. So if I hit zero on the number pad on my keyboard, this is what we have so far. It doesn't look very good because we haven't applied animation to this element. So what I wanna do is maybe start right here and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add our trim paths. All right, and we have to think about what we want this to look like um, after the animation is done. So I think we'll take our trim paths and let's just play around with where we want this to be. Maybe like right there. So that happens to be 77% on the start. And I think we'll put a keyframe right there. That's where it's going to end up. All right, so Maybe when this is coming in, we'll have this start to animate in as well. So let me think here. All right, so I think what we'll do is bring this out. There, whoop, almost. We have to modify this keyframe now. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit zero on the number pad. Okay, I think I like that. So um, we're really at this point, we're not even using our full 60 seconds. So I think what we can do is take these two elements or keyframes rather, and just push them out. And then we can take our keyframes and you can apply velocity to them. There we go, all four selected. Keyframe assistant, we can do easy ease. And it's it's looping, but it's not gonna loop when we're actually in our, um, like when, when it's on actually being displayed on the page. Um, oh, and by the way, I am kind of, kind of wrong about this, I forgot. We also wanna apply a there we go. All right, so I actually kind of like this. And it's it's looping over, but of course it's gonna end right here. So if I just scrub through this, and there we go. All right, so I like that. And now what we need to do is go ahead and actually export this. So. Um, you wanna make sure that you have the extension body movement right here. And so the body movement plugin you can get from ascripts.com forward slash body moving. Uh, it says name your own price. So, you know, you, it is free if you put zero, um, if you wish. Although if you use it, you know, support them, that's always nice. So add that to the cart, get it installed. They have their own little installer at ascripts. So just figure that out on your own. And then um, just go to window and then you choose body uh, extensions, body move, and this shows up. Um, so really the one that we want to export first, we have to select it, it's the clipboard, and then we have to choose a destination. All right, so I uh, let me go in my project over here. There we go. Um, we're gonna export this one. We're just gonna call this um, a, a new folder, clipboard, and this will be clipboard. And it'll save this as a JSON file. So we render, there we go. We're ready to rock. So now um, AE scripts also, um, let's see here. Well, we'll cover that later, but really um, what I wanna do now is start focusing on the other icons. So um, let's get the other one two done. All right. So. At this point, we'll just go to File, New, and we're going to replicate this project um, again, or replicate the process at least. Oh, you wanna make sure this is saved, by the way. So project, we'll call this Clipboard. 
well, we'll just call this AE, AE project, there we go. All right, and we'll go to File, New, New Project, and we're going to choose a new composition. Same thing, hit OK. We go, are going to import. This time we'll do the Hourglass. Nope, I, I forget this every single time. Hourglass, choose this one, hit Import. And then we'll double click into it, take these three, right click, choose Create, and create shapes from vectors. Get rid of the original three, delete those. We'll create a new solid so we can see them. Position to the bottom and hide it. Oh, that's I knew I would forget. On the previous one, I didn't um, hide the white solid before I exported a lot of you, so we're gonna have to redo that, um, but no big deal. Um, so now we wanna start animating this right here. All right, so we need to figure out about how uh, this will animate in. We're here at the first frame. Uh, it doesn't want, we don't want it to look like this. We want it to be without this and this up here. So um, I know for sure the sand, we can push that off sometime in the distance. And this part, we can hide it by going to add and we'll choose um, trim paths. And there's also an offset that we can have for the angle and all that stuff. Um, so for instance, if I, let's see here. If I choose start um, and, and modify the end, we can kind of make it come up if we animate it correctly. But initially it needs to be animated in such a way where we don't even see the thing. Like that. So now it's completely invisible. We'll go ahead and put uh, keyframes. We'll do offset as well, just in case we want to experiment with that keyframe. But then we'll come up maybe to around 20. Uh, actually, first, we're going to figure out when we're going to be animating the other stuff. So um, we'll just show this layer right at frame two. And we're going to use my keyboard up arrow key here. We're going to put it right to the top. All right, and then we will have it come down. So we're gonna scrub forward maybe to around yeah, 20 and we are going to move it. Let's see here, is it this element? There we go. Let's expand this to transforms and position on Y axis will be you know, pretty much down here. Oops, and we wanna make sure that's keyframe there and the position will go back up right there. All right. So what we'll do now is take this and we can also get rid of the end part of that because uh, we're not going to see them after that point. So we can take this and duplicate control D and just kind of move them forward. Duplicate one more time. Maybe make them come in a little bit uh, together. Like that. And in fact, I think it would be make it would make more sense to make these a little bit longer. I'm gonna take those two and delete them. Now we'll duplicate this. And then we'll duplicate this. Okay, like that. Now, as the first piece of sand hits the ground or so, or the bottom of it, we'll have this layer, the bottom, start to animate up. So we can just bring this up over here and we will get out our start and end and offset. You could just hit U. So now it's only gonna show those properties. And I'm going to put a keyframe right here. And then we will start to make this kind of come up. Maybe like right around here, it will come up. So we're going to adjust this so we can start to see things. Let me look right there. And then we'll move forward, make it raise a little bit more, maybe on that side. 
and then move forward here and then do the same thing like that and I guess we could kind of move things out just a tad bit more spread them out and again you can really spend a lot of time fine-tuning these things uh, but I'm not going to be too anal about it just because this is a tutorial okay so let's hit zero all right kind of boring uh, animation in terms of the velocity and such so we can right click this easy ease a little bit more interesting now awesome so now what we can do is um, save this and this is called I uh, will create a new one this is going to be the hourglass all right and then once again um, let's let's get all of our layers out here let's hide that background then we can go to window extensions body moving and where is that at there we go why is that so big and then we can take uh, our hourglass and export that here call hourglass and render done awesome now we have just one more to do so uh, I'll save this and then we'll go to file we'll save uh, as and this time it's going to be um, what is this one this is the uh, download okay so this is going to be download all right so we can go ahead and get rid of that we're gonna go ahead and double click this is download oh, I have to do it every time download there we go composition retain layer sizes double click and yeah that's right we only have two layers this time we'll take them both right click create shapes from vector very repetitive obviously that's why I'm doing three so that you build up the muscle memory um, we're gonna create a new solid it's gonna be white background and we'll lock it all right so before we do anything we're gonna go ahead and create the mask on this layer right here so what I'm gonna do now unfortunately when I tried this before and I was setting out the project I tried to create the mask this way but it was doing that uh, so I didn't want that so we're gonna make sure nothing's selected and we're just going to create we're gonna get right here to the center and then hold alt and control and create a rectangle just like that so it's on its own shape layer um, but if we go ahead and we choose layer mask new mask I come out here in masks just copy this while holding or while selecting this just hit control C um, and then we're gonna come out to our I'm gonna hide this layer we don't need it we're gonna come out to our arrow and then I'm gonna paste that in and so now we have a masks right here and we need to move this over unfortunately I didn't remember its position and we want to invert this oh wait sorry let's go ahead and delete the mass section here that's not supposed to be there it's supposed to be on the cloud there we go so now we're gonna move this in and unfortunately it's not letting me select there we go so now we can just put this position it with your keyboards we want to invert this by the way so we go into masks and we choose inverted and now we have our our mask set up now one thing that you should realize is when you when you plan on if you have if you plan on having a mask in your Lottie or your body moving icon your animated icon um, SVG the SVG renderer in the uh, the JavaScript uh, properties when you go to create the instance of the icon it doesn't play well with masks so you may have to use 
canvas, the canvas renderer instead. If I'm speaking gibberish to you, you'll see what I mean I, when I show you when we get to that point. But for now, just realize that there is a limitation with that. But this is what we want though. So this is what it looks like by default without being hovered. And so we kind of wanted to, the, the arrow to move up slightly and then just shoot off, okay? Like it's like a bow and arrow or something. <clears throat> so we have our, let's see, our arrow. Oh, we can get rid of that shape one right there. We have our arrow, arrow's outline, and we're going to create a keyframe on position right there. And then maybe around 20, it will move up on the Y axis maybe right there, just slightly. As you see, it's not much. And then we will have it fire off. And so on Y, it's gonna go completely off the screen. So hit zero. Now, I do also, let's see here. I do also want to have the bottom of the cloud to kind of, uh, it'll bend up with the arrow and then bend way down when it leaves. Um, so what we need to do is add an anchor point on the bottom portion down here of this arrow. So to do that, we will, let's see here, we'll take the pen tool and you can see if we hover over the path, it'll give us a plus sign. Now I, I wanna put an, an anchor point like right here and also here and then one in the middle. All right, great. So if we come out here, we have our contents. We have a group one and a group two. I believe this path, I'm not sure exactly which. Oh, that's arrows. Never mind. I'm sorry. We're looking at cloud right now. There we go. So we have our group one, we have our paths. All right. So we can actually animate the path itself. So we'll just put a, a, a keyframe there and then a keyframe right when this reaches its highest point. So now we can come down, hold your space bar if you need to pan around. And we're gonna take, so this was an, air, uh, an anchor point already there. Oh, well, no big, big deal. Um, and we wanna take, let's see here, this an, these two anchor points, I guess, I wonder if I can just delete one of these. That's fine. And let's see if I can take this. There we go. We take the pen tool and we hold alt and then just drag out like that. We could possibly also do the same thing here to kind of create more of a, a smooth there we go. Maybe same thing here. All right, like that. So now, awesome. Okay, so let's uh, see that. All right, that doesn't look good, obviously. So we need to make it go with it. I think what I might do is take this keyframe right here, copy it and let it sit there so we'll pause it. All right, so we're on the cloud. Okay, I meant to do that here. Let's hit U. Take this, copy it. So it'll be a, a little bit of a pause when it, it sits up there. So then our cloud graphic, we can move this over. We'll go ahead, put another keyframe here at path, and then maybe right around here, we'll make it come down. All right, so hit enter here. We only wanna select this keyframe, and it's gonna come down slightly, like that, and then Maybe back up. And then finally, 
it'll sit here where it's flat. And this wasn't ideal because I added those and I, I, I messed with those um, anchor points. So I kind of regret doing that, but that's okay. We can just kind of move these back to try to make it look like the beginning state or it's just completely flat. It's not gonna be perfect. I'm not too concerned about it, just for a quick demo. Um, the final thing is when this leaves, let's hit, um, all right, so probably a little bit too much movement on the bottom of the cloud, but that's okay. What I wanna do now is take all of these, right click, we'll choose Easy Ease. All right, and then what we'll do is um, when the arrow is leaving, we can animate the layer mask itself, which happens to be, let's see here, on the cloud. We have our mask right down here. And so we can animate the mask path. All right, so we're gonna put a keyframe like right here, mask path. And then we can alter the shape and we could probably just do this really uh, move it up so now let's go ahead and hit zero and i'll just scrub through this hides oh okay that mask path we need to move it up higher I thought something looked a little funny there and you just needs to go higher on that keyframe. There we go. There we go. Awesome. So now we can go ahead and hide the background, save this, go to window, our extensions, body moving, download, select it. I don't know why it's getting so big. There we go. Um, this time it is download. We'll call this download and we will render. It's done and there we go. So now we're on to final the third, finally the third part of this um, whole process and that is going into uh, Visual Studio Code to make this stuff actually work. All right, so now we're here in, um, I have a blank folder open here in Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna create an index.html we're going to, uh, uh, let's see here, use our abbreviation, exclamation point, enter to create some initial HTML. Um, we're gonna hit link, CSS, main.css. Those of you who follow me know this is, I do this in every front end development tutorial. CSS folder, main.sass. You'll need the live SAS um, extension. So just go over here to extensions, type in live SAS, and you'll find that, and then click watch SAS. All right, and then our index.html, we're gonna get started just with uh, how we wanna deal with the markup. I just decided to use divs. You can use almost anything here. Um, this is just for demo. So we're gonna have an overall container and inside of that container, and that container is gonna allow us just to use um, uh, display grid to center everything. So I'm gonna have a, a div class called BM for body moving. And then also we're gonna use a custom data attribute called data hyphen file. And that will be clipboard. And that's gonna let us know or differentiate our uh, three icons from each other. So clipboard, um, weight, I guess that'll be like the, um, the hourglass one and then also the cloud. All right, sweet. That's all our HTML markup is going to be for this very easy quick demo. Um, what we wanna do now is we're gonna go ahead and save this. And you wanna make sure, we're gonna create an icons folder. And this is where our actual data, um, our JSON data that was exported from the body move and plugin from After Effects, this is where they will go. Um, so let me right click off screen real quick, quickly here. And I'm gonna copy and paste those files that we exported. So I'm gonna reveal an explorer over here paste those in. So as you can see, weight was a little bit longer uh, in file sizes, so um, just keep that in mind. And these are just JSON files. 
crazy stuff. All right, so now we need to import, and this time, we're, we're, I mean, the, for this de demo, we're just gonna use um, a CDN. So if I control B to get rid of that sidebar, you'll see script source. This is the URL. Of course, this is all gonna be available um, on CodePen. So check the YouTube description for the code and all that stuff. Um, we'll write our JavaScript down here. All right. So the first thing that we're gonna do, because we have multiple icons, we're gonna use, uh, by the way, we're gonna use pure JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript. I'm not gonna use anything else. Um, we're gonna use a get elements by class name uh, method for this. So var bm for body movement, we wanna get all three of these. So we use document.query, uh, not dot .query, I'm sorry, get elements by class name. So that class name is BM. That's gonna give us these three right here. Now, unfortunately, the way this is set up, it doesn't actually provide you with an array. So we can't use for each on it. Instead, we can use array prototype for each dot call to iterate through them. So prototype dot for each dot call. And what is it that we wanna pass in? It's, it's our variable we created up there, our property BM. And then how can we reference those individually? We'll just call them icon. All right, so now inside of here, this is where we can create our instance of the body move and plugin um, or the icons. So we'll say var anim for animation equals body moving. And this is right here imported from this or accessible through it rather load animation. And then we just put in properties inside of object, an object here. So um, the container is going to be icon. Icon is passed in here. In other words, this is gonna be a container, this is a container, and this is a container as it iterates through each three of these right here. All right, so it needs to know where it's going, which HTML element. And also the path, the path to the JSON file that we exported from After Effects. So I'm gonna put in backticks, we'll have it in forward slash I, in, in icons folder. And then we're going to use here um, the icon dot data set. So if you know anything about uh, vanilla JavaScript and the DOM, we have access to these properties right here, these custom properties through dot data set dot file. So we don't include the data hyphen. We just include the custom name. I decided to call it file. So this will give us this value right here. All right, and so then we put .json. All right, so that's the file path for each one. And then the renderer, we're gonna choose SVG initially, then I'll choose canvas as well to show you the difference. Loop on these are gonna be false and autoplay will be false as well. Now you can try to um, experiment on your own by making these true or whatever. Um, so let's go ahead and save this. Control B, we'll right click, open with live server. That's also a plugin you can install over here, open with live server. And I'm gonna wait here for a second. And here's what it is without any CSS. They're all really large and just stupid looking. Um, as we can see, there's an issue right here and you'll find out um, that's why we're gonna choose Canvas instead. Um, but now we actually have to use CSS to make these more presentable. And then we'll add the hover effects as well. All right, so the CSS is actually very simple. We only have literally three rule sets. I'm going to copy and paste our body, setting the margin to zero, height 100, viewport height, display grid, place item center. That will take that um, that container and just place it centered vertically and horizontally. And then just background is a very slight gray. After that, our container, I'm just choosing display flex and that will right align or left align the um, icons next to each other so that they're not all on their own line. And then finally, BM for body moving, that's our icons that we wrap them in. So all we're doing, a width, height of 60 pixels. Of course, if you wanted this to be responsive, you'd, you'd use uh, EM units if you wished. Um, backgrounds, white, border radius 10, cursor pointer for the hover, and then margin and um, padding is 10. So now 
it should look a lot more presentable if I can find wherever my, yeah, my toolbar wasn't working. There we go. So this is what they look like. Now, of course, there's no animation applied to these because we have um, autoplay set to false. Let's go ahead and just change that real quick to true. And let's change loop to true as well. It's gonna be crazy because all three of them are gonna go um, firing at once. Oh, actually, I was wrong about that. It actually has, oh, no, I'm not. We're at 5501. There we go. That was my previous project. So this actually, you would never want this by default unless you're trying to present your icons or something to your team. Um, so you can see right here, this one's messed up. Why is that messed up? Well, it's because of that issue I told you about when it comes to masks. It just doesn't play well in the SVG renderer. So instead, we can change this to canvas. And I don't know why my toolbar isn't working on that monitor, but no big deal. And now we can see it works exactly as we intended it. So now let's actually make these things work on hover and only play. And then we can also reverse the animation as well when the mouse leaves. So right here, what we can do is um, just add an event listener on the icon instance. So it, icon to add event listener. And we're gonna do, let's see here, on mouse enter. We're gonna say anim, which is referenced right here. It's created right there. Um, dot set direction one. Now that is what the direction is set by default, but we have to set it here because when we create the second add event listener of mouse leave, we're gonna be setting the direction to negative one. So we kind of have to like set it to the default right here. And then we do anim.play. So if we save this now and change these both to false, ah, false, can't talk go back to our demo here there we go now the thing is is that it, they only do they only work once so we have to create the second event listener let's copy this mouse leave set direction negative one and then we play and that's it so now it's going to work as we intended so Refresh, look at that. So it just, we're, we're setting the uh, direction to negative one and hit play when it leaves just to create a reverse effect. You don't have to do that, it's just something that I chose to do. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. All right, so hopefully you really enjoyed that series. It was kind of lengthy, but I wanted to do three icons just so you develop some mu muscle memory. That's how you learn these things. Um, if you haven't yet though, make sure to subscribe because I'm always putting out new tutorials on UI, UX design, and front-end development. All right, I'll see you guys real soon. Goodbye.